Are you tired of the typical libraries with conventional music that makes you feel meh? Introducing Lyrics.com, the music website made for and by minds like you. Our team are lifelong musicians and producers in love with music. Search the Lyrics music catalogs and find music with guaranteed originality. Mark the difference with music of signature at lyrics.com. about this incredible intro these are these are fantastic musicians playing here this is the band belly the tiger uh, this is human vessel this song that's the song title look at this here are these fantastic vocals love it change on tempo that's fantastic we have the whole band with us today so we have Duane, that I've been, Trammer, that I've been speaking with. And we have the rest of the band too. Hi Duane, how are you? Hi everybody. I'm fantastic. Hello. Hello. Hi Antoine. Hi. Fantastic. So, uh, all right, let's see if I got it correct. So Duane is the drummer, Andrew bassist, Michael guitars and keyboards. And Danny right. is this vocalist, fantastic vocals. Although, well, everybody, everybody is really, really good. So, hey, why don't you take the floor, talk, talk to us, uh, tell us a little bit about this project, your band, Belly the Tiger. So, well, yeah, this is Dwayne. Um, we are uh, you know, kind of uh, a, a collection of uh, longtime acquaintances and uh, co-workers uh, in the day job uh, world. Um, Danny and I uh, work together um Uh, for for a number of years and I had actually been retired from playing for 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 a while and uh, Danny had this prog project come up and uh, asked me if I wanted to play and I heard some of the demos and uh, thought yeah this is uh, this would be a good way to get back into playing again and uh, we've been doing it ever since uh, that was about uh, four years ago um, we four years. played for we were together yeah yeah we had, but it was what February 2019 I think is when we started um first started playing okay. together um and uh michael uh, has a, a studio in his home and uh, this is where we uh rehearse uh weekly jet typically and uh we uh have recorded all of our uh our, our album from uh 2022 or 2021 excuse me lost um as it was called and then uh the, the new ep uh which was just released a couple of months ago um so um Started out, uh, this is Michael, the guitarist, keyboard player. Um, I'm an old friend, me and Danny are old friends, the vocalist. And he called me um, a few years ago to, to do like a prog album. And it started off just as sort of a project. And by, by the time Dwayne came on the scene, we started to kind of decide to build the band and put out a, a recording and, and then begin to play live. Um, but there was a long time when we were recording where we did, I didn't actually think we were going to be a band that was going to perform live. And so... Um, I made different <laughs> uh, aesthetic choices at that time than I than I'm making now <laughs> for the music and orchestration, um, but it's 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 progressed quite quite wonderfully. All right, so um, I see how the synergies uh, have worked together to to bring you like based on uh, admiration, I would say. So what I hear from what you're telling me. Um, you know, I know this person to be a very, very good musician, or I heard the uh, the demos and they were really, you know, attractive for me. And you can tell that I can, I can tell it, uh, you know, as a, as a person dedicated to music for for a long time. You get to a point that you want to keep your level or improve your level. 
Is this that kind of situation? Do you get, have you gotten before there's a lot of offers to play in other uh, projects? And maybe this is what really call you based on, you know, like musicianship, let's say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I if I understand your, your question correctly, I believe so. Um, you know, this is, you know, pro progressive rock and is a labor of love for myself. And it's a passion and almost uh, a, a compulsion, um, really. And having a band like this to kind of focus myself and kind of focus my energy um, as, as, as a writer and kind of quasi composer um, is, has been very, very important. And, and every release and every time we do something in the next song we write, I'm always trying to kind of push the boundaries of, and our own limitations. Um, before this, before this interview, I was just commenting and working with the guys on basically new investments in the studio to kind of push those technological boundaries. So our next round of recordings sound even more modern and professional, um, and sonically pleasing and interesting, um, and trying to constantly push that, push, push those boundaries. Um, I think it's a little tell. different for all of us, but you know, it, for me, it's it's a lifelong pursuit, and you know, I, I wasn't playing for for uh, a, a few years there, but um, I was still listening to new music and learning new things about music. And when I came back to playing again, I, you know, my hands maybe weren't quite there uh, right off the bat, but I I still feel like I was a better musician than I had been when I had stopped playing, you know, a number of years before. Um, So that never really stops, no matter what project I'm involved in. I, it, it's not, uh, you know, it's more than just getting together in the garage and making some noise for sure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty serious about music. I have been for a long time. Uh, Michael and I both have uh, college degrees in music. Um, I worked uh, as a full-time freelance musician in Chicago for a number of years. Um, did a lot of jazz playing, a lot of other things. Original rock was not among those things, though. So this has been a new experience for me, and there's been you know growth out of it just just because of that. Because this is just not the type of project I would have been involved in years ago when I was making a full-time living playing music. I really like the back, the eclectic background of all the members is is really. Is, is important because it makes that final product um a it's a challenge to make it cohesive but i think it's it's much easier to get much more depth out of that to have multifaceted individuals from various backgrounds <laughs> andrew here you know has has a death metal project that he does on the side um and and i actually really love that <laughs> about that because it's a different aesthetic and and bring especially as a bass player bringing that sensibility into something that's a little bit more delicate Um, and maybe traditional in some sense, in some aesthetic regard, it's kind of fascinating to me. And I, I'm really, I really like having those sort of multifaceted voices, um, rather than having someone much more similar to myself or a very similar background. Yeah, things end up sounding the same. Yeah, exactly. Or predictable yeah. within a, predictable yeah. within a, I don't want to be predictable. I don't want to be predictable either. Yeah. yeah. And from a vocalist point of view, this has been a, a unique and challenging project this is the first band in my adult life where i don't have an instrument in my hands um it very challenging indeed um and uh i i i you know i love my heroes everything i grew up with all the prog bands i grew up with i'm also a big fan of pop music and uh man i will take from any good melody and see if there's a way to make that stick in some of the stuff we do and that's a challenge It's a challenge, but wow, I like the results when it's done. Um, Human Vessel was, was that one of them? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember where I. Well, I won't say that for, the, <laughs> for legal reasons. <laughs> yeah. Danny takes a lot from some of the uh, female singers of the '90s. So yeah, a lot so of them. them. That influence on Human Vessel, if I recall correctly, in, in the code <laughs> section. Yeah, I feel her breathing a lot. Just a breathing, just a breathing. Yeah. Not no. the young. Okay, so. <laughs> Talking about influences, can you mention, you know, uh, some of the influences that, uh, you know, have uh, taken a part into the song or 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 your sound in general? Um, so sort of some references that, you know, you can, you admire or you're, you're trying to, you know, inspire you. That's that's a tough question because it really runs the gamut. When we yeah. were 
we were, um, you know, Dwayne's got a very good pair of ears here for tuning studio spaces and speakers. And we tried out some really crazy eclectic music through the system to make sure it was balanced. You know, everything from, you know, Rush to Dead Can Dance to Joni Mitchell to some, you know, South American jazz artists. Milton Nascimento, yeah. Ray Dyes, you know, that's a, that's a real uh, uh, kind of important record for, for a few of us. Yeah. <clears throat> and so just a very eclectic background, you know, and of course the, the, the prog rock sort of, History, you know, of yes, yeah. Crimson in Kansas, Dane is a huge Kansas huge fan, Kansas fan. Um, and that that pops up in our music quite a bit, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, we all kind of you know, most of us cut our teeth on Led Zeppelin, and uh, yeah. Yeah. that's uh, that's an yeah. old deep purple, you know, yeah. this this great new rock music of the of the 60s and 70s, um, in particular. But, um, I'm also a big jazz head. Um, 20th century classical music. Uh, Human Vessel, I just wrote a, a post up on uh, on our Facebook page this morning on Human Vessel and the the, the, the tempo devices that we're using where, we're, we're, you know, we change tempos a few times. And uh, some people have commented that the, the, the changes sounded brand new to them, but they're, <laughs> they're, they're anything but. They're, they're actually very carefully calibrated metric modulations where the tempos have a, a very specific relationship to one another. Oh yeah. Um, uh, to, can you ran to a click now? Can, Everything's to a click. To, can you dive Anything a little bit more good. into what's behind the particular uh, change on tempo? That was one of the things that I, you know, uh, that I really liked about this song. So was there like, is there anything that you can, uh you know re uh, say that uh inspire the 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 tempo the particular tempo changes so yeah so the the device is called metric modulation um and uh I, I, it's something i've been fiddling with for a long time actually a lot of the jazz music i was writing back in the uh 90s and early 2000s employed that device um uh one of my favorite uh 20th century composers, Elliot Carter, kind of pioneered the codification of it back in the 1940s. Um, and it's kind of per permeated to, to the jazz world from there and has kind of become more and more um, visible in the rock world, too. Um, in the post I wrote on uh, on social media this morning, I mentioned uh, a band called Mastodon and a, a, a minor hit they had a few years ago called Oblivion. And that, that employs the same metric modulation device, device in, in really kind of slick ways but there's a lot of people doing it um at this point in time i think i could i was actually thinking it might be fun to kind of collect an example of of songs that do this and um you know there's a million ways to do it uh they they don't sound the same at all but what's what's common between them is that you're, you're moving in one meter and then you kind of morph into this other meter and all before you know it suddenly you're in this different tempo different feel and you know you got there smoothly but it take some parsing. Uh, in fact, when I, I wrote out the explanation uh, for the for the post, uh, it, it took me took me a few hours to backtrack and, and remember what exactly I had done and figure out what the relationships were. But once I checked them, it's like, yep, that's that's what it is. So awesome. So yeah, let's <laughs> I will I will find that post. I'm really interested in it. anybody who can, uh, you know, who's uh, curious about it can can reference that. I also very much liked the guitar lick at the beginning. It's it's very captivating. How you know, like uh, I would want to ask Michael. I suppose that this is your work. Um, how did you arrive to these, you know, this enchanting type of uh, guitar lick? Um, well, I, I play with my fingers. I play with. I use a. I use a, a thumb pick that I've sculpted myself out of using files and everything so it fits on my finger and I can hold it almost like a traditional pick but I actually am constantly finger picking because I'm classically trained um, with, I, have a, I have a degree in classical guitar that I got years ago and um, so and I like the I like the way my kind of fingers play on an instrument with, with distortion and li I like the way that feels um, and I'm not the only one who plays this way Richard Fortis is another great player um, what have you done? Oh, Richie Cotton. Richie Cotton yeah. another great player yeah. who yeah, plays with his fingers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I'm a big fan of those guys that... Yeah, they all got it from Jeff Beck. We all got it from Jeff Beck. 
<laughs> yeah, we're just a bunch of Jeff Beck ripoffs. Yeah, y'all. Are. Uh, all y'all. <laughs> but I, you know, I employed that sort of that that meter idea of like the one two three one two three one two one two dot 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 dot, and you know, it's basically just like a, a nice little arpeggio figure over top of that rhythmic figure, um, and then you know, I using trying to come up with like a nice use of effects and tone to create a nice sort of landscape of sound. You know, and like I alluded to earlier, when I done when we were doing the first record, I didn't I wasn't sure we were gonna be a band and play out and so I wasn't thinking about how I was gonna perform anything live. And with the E P I was much more conscientious that yeah. the things the newer stuff's moving in that direction. Yeah, right. th- that things were a little bit more stripped down and performative. And performable, performable, yeah. <laughs> performable. You only need five guys yeah. instead of ten. <laughs> yeah, to do it. Um, and so I was much more aware of that. So I was trying to come up with guitar parts that wouldn't. I wouldn't need a lot of parts to kind of fill up the space. I was trying to come up with parts that by by just playing it and playing it well um, would fill up its own space, and I wouldn't have to put any overdubs on it or anything like that. So I'm pretty happy with Human Vessel because there really isn't any. There's a there's a there's an acoustic bed track just to kind of help the background glue together a little bit. And other than that, there's just that that guitar part on top of it. And there's no other overdubs whatsoever on there. No, I think is I think you're right. It's really, really fulfilling and it goes great with the atmosphere that the rest of the instrumentation is creating at the time. So I'm conscious about your your time and I, I want to be mindful, but I have many questions maybe this is not the last time hope hopefully not the last time we talk i would like to ask danny uh, who wrote the lyrics i hope you know danny was was he you who wrote the lyrics no most of these lyrics michael is uh, writes poetry incredible uh, boxes All right. and boxes full of poetry and i get a hold of them i'll go through a box and go oh what is this gem right here <laughs> and i'm, I'm, I'm probably Man, four or five of the ones we've done on the the record and the EP are just something I picked out of the box and went like, "Oh, Michael, it goes like this," and I'll sing him a melody. Yeah, and and then you know, and then it's making poet making poetry into a song, so it gets changed quite a bit from the original poem. But uh, there's only five, six of them that started like that. <laughs> it's a back and forth shaping process, and I just I'm I I like Danny working with Danny because I can handle a stack of Uh, stuff that doesn't go together. <laughs> so it'll kind of, it'll pull out lines and just kind of we stick it together and, and kind of glue it together that way at times too. Sometimes I hand them stuff that's kind of ninety percent there. Those are nice, you know. And Those then nice. and then I listen to them kind of think through it, and then I'll go back and I'll do another editing stage and shaping stage, and we go back and forth in that type of communication. And it, it becomes a group effort after a while. It really is. Um, so I mean, I'm I'm happy to sort of have it be dated as such. Um, but I try to walk in and have a lot of raw material ready to be bandied about by everybody and kind of build stuff up that way, if that makes any sense. It does, and it actually, uh, it's very commendable, the, um, you know, the great synergy and dynamics that we can hear, anybody can hear from you talking amongst yourselves, and the, you know, check your ego at the door type of attitude To be able yeah. to be able to, you know, like, hey, this is great. I'm gonna use it. This is fantastic. I love that. I love that. That really projects um, the professionalism in how good of, you know, musicians, uh, experienced musician, musicians yeah. uh, that are in this band. Very admirable, I gotta tell you. The last question, I well, almost last, but I I don't want to leave that Andrew um, and. My question would be, how do you find your space when, when there's so much going on, so so mm, so much quality? How do you find your space as a basis to, you know, to leave your mark, to get your firm notice? Um, well, I, uh, I, I'd say, like, I try to play bass in a sort of a, a way that's influenced by all the different types of music that I listen to in a way that fits in with this band as well. So uh, I'm, I'm really big on like, you know, variations, like not playing the same line exactly the same twice. Even if I, even if I played it a particular way on the recording, 
sometimes I'll switch it up a little bit live or I'll, I'll allow it to continue to evolve. If I feel like there's a new idea that's going to fit better than my initial one, mm-hmm. um, I like to, to let that let those changes come in and, and uh, take over if they work out. And um, also, I would say like writing bass lines to Michael's guitar parts is really interesting sometimes because it there's, there's like several notes that you can choose as the root note, or not the root note, but like a, yeah. a good bass note, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. just being able to walk around between them is, is really nice. Yeah, there's so. the bass player, Andrew, has a lot of power, and he's really good about exercising it and using it in a very delicate, considerate way. Um, you'd be you'd be shocked that when we're writing and producing and recording, we don't we don't really have to talk to each other a lot. It's just mm-hmm. we just kind of like set everything up and roll it a few times, and then after a few repetitions, everybody's kind of got a pretty strong idea of what's happening. And then after that, it's just a couple details that we end up kind of bashing into shape. And everyone's you know just trying to bring bring to the music what the music calls for, and once you see what the what's there and and, and what the essence of it is. It, uh, you know, I don't want to say it writes itself, but it, 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 it does. Sometimes, it sometimes it feels that yeah. way, and you it know, um, the the because are like the, that. The, the chemistry is, you know, good enough in the band, and everyone's a strong enough player. Everyone can just kind of play the way they want to, and and it pretty much works. So, um, I actually I gather that from our conversation. I can tell, you know, I believe me, I got the picture of of <laughs> the the you know the level in this band uh, is tremendous and and I, I can see that I imagine those practices going smoothly in the writing process as well it, you know and you got great energy amongst yourselves you, you, you know it's, it's visible it's very evident and I'm, I commend you to continue and I want to thank you for your time this is again this is okay. Human Human Vessel by Belling the Tiger hopefully you know we'll talk again Please. We hope so. Yeah, hey, man. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. All Looking right. forward. Okay, so all the best. And we're going to enjoy a little bit more of Human Vessel by Bell and the Tiger. of the typical libraries with conventional music that makes you feel mad. Introducing Lyrics.com, the music website made for and by minds like you. Our team are lifelong musicians and producers in love with music. Search the Lyrics music catalogs and find music with guaranteed originality. Mark the difference with music of signature at Lyrics. Dot com.